When I first entered the parliament, in my maiden speech, I spoke about how we were entering an era of rights. And in that era, how we were going to be forced to choose between competing claims to determine whose rights should prevail. Now, more often than not, the, the rights that are claimed are just desires. They're a wish for an individual peccadillo to be endorsed by society in order to make someone feel better about themselves. To me, this is an insane pursuit for any developed society to indulge in. The ultimate result is widespread unhappiness, disillusionment and ultimately anger. Now, we're seeing that play out in real t time in the real world. One person's pronoun choice is another's compelled speech. We're now being told that men are actually women and that we all have to have pride in all manner of perversions. In a social sense, we've actually suspended reality in favour of feelings. But we're also actually doing it in the economic space. You may have received an electricity account this week. I certainly did. My consumption was up 39%. And I've got to say, that was mostly due to the really cold weather. But my account went up by nearly 400% and largely thanks to all that free renewable energy we're forced to take. There was no sign on my account of the $275 saving promised by the Labor government either. Oh, hang on, that's right. They changed that promise to the mealy mouth. It would have been worse if not for us, political rubbish. It is actually the government's policies that are making things worse in the electricity sector. This push to renewables is killing our household and our business budgets. But please, don't just take my word for it. Here's the latest report from the Australian Energy Regulator. In New South Wales, the reduction in black coal capacity largely reflected Liddell Power Station's exit. While other black coal generators in New South Wales shifted some capacity to lower price bands, had Liddell's capacity still been available, prices would have been lower. Well, it's a bit odd, isn't it? Despite continually being told that renewables are the cheapest, there's an admission if we had more black coal power generation, we'd actually have cheaper electricity prices. That represents one of the new competing rights that I mentioned just moments ago. The government wants to signal their green credentials and they're happy for you to pay the price. And the price of that is you no longer have available cheap and reliable electricity. And then, of course, the government also ignore the complete environmental disaster that solar, batteries and wind power offer over the long term. The mining, the manufacture, the disposal of these toxic elements is the dirty secret of the green goody two-shoes. But it gets much worse than that. While the government continually regurgitates the big lie of how renewables are saving the planet, they've actually been caught in a rights dilemma of their own making. This week, the climate Kool-Aid drinking minister, Chris Bowen, removed a proposed offshore wind farm development from an approved zone in order to placate a group of Aboriginals. The Spinifex project, as it's known, is proposed by Alinta Energy. It's now been abandoned because the minister has said there are to be no developments within 20 kilometres of Portland in Victoria. This was done to prevent interference with the spiritual connections of the local Aboriginal tribe. Now, I have to admit, I never knew the nomadic tribes of Australia wandered 10 or more kilometres offshore to cultivate their spiritual connections. Perhaps they walked there tens of thousands of years ago, although that would then suggest sea levels have risen over time and actually have nothing to do with man's carbon dioxide emissions. Do you see the conundrum here? Do we save the planet or placate the spirits of the local tribe? If only Alinta had more money to just make this problem go away, we could all be worshipping the offshore deities that the new left insist will save mankind.